on this week in Iowa. New tariffs from the president are causing frustrations for Iowa farmers. Then we're breaking down the new hemp law in Iowa, plus a conversation about a new lawsuit against the governor, and meet the first Democrat to campaign for Senator Joni Ernst's job. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us here on This Week in Iowa. I'm Sabrina Ahmed. Last week, President Trump announced that he is increasing tariffs on billions of dollars worth of Chinese goods from 10 to 25 percent. China retaliated, announcing an increase on $60 billion of U.S. goods imported to China starting June 1st. In a tweet last week, President Trump said the consumers won't feel the impact, but local economists disagree. The ISU economist says everyday products are going to cost more, like clothing and electronics. In the short run right now, our economy is suffering, producers are suffering, and there's a lot of anxiety. And our market does not like anxiety. And so it's, that's what's reflected right now in the stock market and the prices being so low today. So the ongoing trade dispute hit the markets hard on Monday. The Dow dropped more than 500 points following the news that China would move to counter soybeans, spiraled even lower. Eventually, by the end of the week, they did rise again, but still a lot of turmoil. Now, Ag Secretary Mike Neg here in Iowa said is is definitely impacting Iowa's economy. It has to impact, right? It, I mean, we're talking about really a foundational element of Iowa's total economy. Now, I remain hopeful that we can get something done. Um, again, the, the Chinese in particular need us. We need them. This is how trade works or is supposed to work anyway. And so I think in the long run, when you look at global demographics and you look at the need for protein and for ag products around the world, uh, we still have a tremendous amount of opportunity. We've got to get our products there. We've got to have free trade agreements. So uh, I think it's too soon to tell in a lot of cases, you know, what the total impact of this is. More from Secretary Nagin in just a few minutes. Now, meanwhile, sports betting in Iowa is legal. Officially, we joined 10 other states. Governor Reynolds signed the sports gambling bill into law Monday. The Iowa Racing and Gaming Commission is working to get everything up and running in the next three months. We need to take a short break, but coming up next on This Week in Iowa, it is now legal to grow and sell hemp in Iowa. Sort of. We'll sort through the new law and how the Ag Department is involved in our state. A second case of measles has been confirmed in Iowa. Local 5 was the first station to report this measles case. Learn of breaking news first with alerts on the We Are Iowa app. A puppy is recovering this morning after being stabbed and left to die in a dumpster in Ames. You'll never wonder if a story is national or local. An ISU grad student is accused of sexually assaulting a woman. Receive important local breaking news alerts first from Local 5. Download the We Are Iowa app to your phone today. I'm Health Crusader. And the Gamica Girl, looking out for you. At Natural Grocers, we only sell eggs from free range chicken. <laughs> Unlike the other guys. Natural Grocers, good for you. Free range eggs, just $1.99. Kick off this summer with a great deal on some of our most popular vehicles at the Honda Memorial Day sales event. Now it's your chance to get an outstanding vehicle with a great offer. Honda was awarded 2019's Best Overall Brand by KBB.com. Visit your Honda dealer today for a great deal at the Honda Memorial Day sales event. Des Moines, we're celebrating Memorial Day all month long at Bob Brown Buick GMC. And we've got American-made deals for life on four wheels. Get up to 16% off MSRP on the 2019 Terrain. Or up to 20% off MSRP on the 2019 Acadia. That's up to $10,000 off. Give us a visit at Bob Brown Buick GMC in Ankeny or at BobBrownBuickGMC.com. Crusader. And Organica Girl, looking out for you. No toxic pesticides at Natural Grocers. Unlike the other guys. Natural Grocers only sells 100% organic produce. Natural Grocers, good for you. This session, a law passed that legalizes industrial hemp. Now the Department of Ag has to get their program approved by the federal government. Then farmers can get licenses and grow in their field. But there are a lot of unknowns, including if this legalized CBD, oil that is. I talked to Ag Secretary Mike Nag about this, and he says if it's considered a food, so anything you ingest, including dietary supplements and these oils, they're still not legal. 
the way this will work for a grower, it should be fairly straightforward. Um, apply to uh, the Department of Ag here in Iowa uh, to be licensed to grow. Uh, we've got a cap of 40 acres. That is something that the legislature did want in place was to cap the, the, uh, the number of acres that folks could grow. But uh, tell us where that field is. Go plant. At some point, we will come out and do an inspection and a test on that crop to make sure it is uh, industrial hemp and not something else, so below 0.3% uh, THC, and, uh, and, then, and then harvest. What products sure. can come from hemp? Uh, it's a really, it's an incredibly diverse plant. Um, it, and then how you grow it depends on some of the products that okay. you can get on the, on, the, on, the, on the back end. But you know, one of the things that folks are a lot of interest in would be uh, CBD uh, production. And, and of course, we have a medical CBD um, a program in the state of Iowa, and there's production, and you can go into dispensaries, and that really remains, for the most part, unchanged. Uh, but, but I think uh, you look across the country, states that are involved in this or folks that are growing hemp around the country are supplying a CBD marketplace. And uh, that's one of those things that I think is interesting. There's a lot of federal regulatory questions around that still. Uh, it is not approved as a food ingredient yet. And so that's, that's something that folks really need to be thinking about. You still can't legally buy CBD uh, on products on shelves in Iowa today. A lot of people will say that's not the case. That as we read the law, as we interpret uh, the law it's in the state of Iowa today, unless you are purchasing a product that's in that medical uh, CBD program, it is not legal. And federally, again, the FDA does not recognize CBD yet as an approved feed in, food or feed ingredient. But hemp is no longer a Schedule One narcotic. So right. Doesn't that... If hemp can, you can make CBD oil out of hemp, then doesn't that inadvertently legalize it? I think it, it certainly creates now an issue that needs to be resolved. There needs to be now federal clarity, just like we needed federal clarity on that Schedule One listing of industrial hemp. Now we need that on CBD. But remember, too, there's a lot of other things that hemp can be used to produce, and we can go there, which, you know, uh, a, a number of products that can be made using the hemp fiber. Uh, you can also produce, of course, hemp grain, uh, which may have some uses, hemp oil. And so uh, there, there's a number of products, uh, kind of famously, uh, mm -hmm. a, a number of products that can be made and historically have been made using hemp. Now, those products, those uh, that hemp will now have to compete with some well-established supply chains as well. So, you know, there's got to be a, an entry there and a price point that makes sense. But uh, that, that's why we keep saying to folks, Know what you are getting into here. Understand what that marketplace looks like. Um, and then again, how you grow the product in the field will determine what, what kind of end product you end up with. Well, and that was another question I had. Is it, how do you get into that market? Is it sold as a commodity? Mm -hmm. Do you sell it like grain? Does it make as much money as soy or make as much money as corn? I think all of that is, is uh, those are great questions, uh, frankly. I think those are the, uh, that's the uncertainty that we find ourselves in. And, and folks, again, who, uh, who want to get into this space need to do some research. Uh, there's a lot of you know, estimates out there about what you know, income per acre and, and things like that. Th those aren't well established. Uh, those are a lot of estimates. And so, again, we would just encourage that, and, and it would be just like any other niche uh, product or specialty crop that somebody might want to get, want to get into, uh, you need to understand whether you can be paid for it. And, and that's, that's really on the producer. We're going to help, and we think there's an economic opportunity here, but uh, it really is on the producer to understand uh, what that end game looks like for them. Can they get a contract? Can they get paid? Okay, one, back, back to the CBD oil mm -hmm. conversation. Are you asking the federal government then to make a change? Have you had that conversation with our senators or our congressional leaders? You know, this has been a conversation that's really been uh, prevalent among my colleagues and my peers across the state uh, or across the country for the last oh, a good couple of years. And so, yes, in that context, states, we're not the only state who needs this kind of clarity. So I think uh, FDA is very well aware uh, Congress, I believe, is aware of the uh, of the issue here, and uh, I think it is something that needs to be resolved. But I would like to see it resolved at the federal level because you end up with states moving out, and you end up with a checkerboard of regulation here. In the meantime, what is your message to those people who are getting CBD oil from I don't know where, but are selling it here in the state? 
even just out of their home. My, uh, my, my message has to be uh, that, uh, you know, as we interpret the law, and, uh, and, and there, we're not the only ones. Again, this is I, Department of Agriculture. My responsibility really is to focus on the growing of right. uh, hemp. And we would not have regulatory oversight over what's on the grocery store shelf or what's uh, marketed online. So I should be careful there. Uh, I'd get outside of my lane pretty quick. But as we understand it, and certainly we want to understand it because we want to be able to advise producers what they're getting into, but uh, it's not legal in the state of Iowa. And, uh, and it is not approved as an FDA, uh, by the FDA as a, an approved food ingredient. And until it is, uh, there'll be some, a lot of uncertainty. We'd like to thank Secretary Nag for his time. We switch gears now to talk about a lawsuit against the state filed by lawmakers. Next. Adventureland Park is now open weekends. Enjoy an entire summer of fun with a season pass including Adventure Bay and the Phoenix. Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix. Our new spinning roller coaster coming in June. Season passes are only $140 until May 31st. Get yours today on our website at adventurelandresort.com. Come on over to Adventureland. Only your locally owned Cub Cadet dealer has genuine parts, accessories, trained service technicians, and the widest selection of innovative Cub Cadet products. We're here for you whenever you need us. With expert service and support to keep your equipment running at peak performance for years to come. And right now, get up to $200 off select XT Enduro Series lawn tractors. To find the dealer near you, visit CubCadetDealers.com. You want Extreme Internet and TV because it's simple. Simple to watch. Fallon Show. With the Extreme Voice Remote. Nice to meet you. Simple to watch here. To go, please. Or there with your Mediacom ID. And the simplest way to keep everyone and every room running at top speed. Switching is simple. Get Extreme Internet 60 and over 170 channels for $64.98 a month for one year. Call 844-EXTREME2. You have worked for a long time. There are so many decisions to make about your retirement. How much income do you need? How not to run out of money? Now is your chance, and you get one shot to get it right. Attend Merkel Retirement Planning's Passport to Retirement. We will discuss how to create tax-free income, how to avoid the next market meltdown, and how to wring every dime out of Social Security. Your time is now. Classes fill quickly. Call or text today. Zero cost to attend. You're watching This Week in Iowa, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Iowa. Welcome back, everyone. This week, multiple lawmakers filed a lawsuit against the governor for a law that she signed this session, basically changing the way Iowa judges are selected. It gives her more power, the governor more power, than the attorneys who also appoint people to this commission because now she picks the majority of people who make up this panel. And it was a change that was ch tacked on to a budget bill uh, in the very last minutes of the session. So I'm joined now by Brian Meyer, who is one of the lawmakers suing the governor. Representative Meyer, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. It's nice to have you on the show. First of all, tell us about the changes. What does this all mean and why is this a big deal? Well, it basically gives her an extra appointment on the commission. And the reason it's a big deal is that it politicizes it. Uh, there is no reason for the change. We've had this system in place since, I think, 1962. And, you know, I always approach this stuff by, when I look at bills, I say, what is the problem that we're trying to fix here? There was no problem. Okay, so, uh, so it, she goes from having eight appointments right. to nine. Correct. Okay, and so now, who are the attorneys who are picking the other eight? The bar. Uh, everybody that's a, a member of the bar, uh, they have the ability to uh, pick commissioners, and it's done through the Supreme Court. And which judges are being picked that this change applies to? This change only applies to um, justices on the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals, judges on the Court of Appeals. Those are the changes that would be affected. So it's not the rest of the judges that maybe if you were going 
for correct. any other. The, yeah, correct. The original bill had these changes that went all the way down to district associate judges. Uh, this particular language only applies to Supreme Court justices and uh, uh, Court of Appeals judges. When I've spoken to uh, the Speaker of the House, Linda Upmeyer, and other leaders throughout this entire process of potentially changing the system, Representative Upmeyer, or Speaker Upmeyer, always told me that this was not political. Mm -hmm. But then uh, you say it is political, and I just spoke to the governor about this mm -hmm. last week, and she said, well, of course it's always been political, mm -hmm. but it's just the politics that maybe the attorneys haven't liked. So take a listen to what she had to say. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the last 15 years, at the most out of all of those positions, there have been one Republican and many times there were none. And so it's just so ironic to me that people say it is a power grab by the governor when, you know what, it has always been that way, it has always been political, it was just uh, uh, lawyer politics instead of maybe the gubernatorials. Do you believe, do you agree with that? Of course it's political. That's what this is. Um, I don't think it always has been political, and I don't know the party affiliation of the people that have been on the commission before. I've never really thought about it, okay? Um, clearly, they're thinking about it, and clearly they knew what the politics were of the people that were on the commission. What's the point in making the change? Of course it's political. So is this all stemming from decisions like, for example, the gay marriage decision that then justices were actually removed from the Supreme Court because of the retention vote uh, following that decision from the Supreme Court and then the abortion uh, ban that was struck down because uh, the Republicans had pushed it through and a judge struck it down? Do you think that that's what's motivating this? I guess. I don't know what's motivating it. I mean, it's very political. I assume it's because they don't like decisions that have been made. Why else would you make the change? We've had a great system. The system is apolitical. We don't have politics in the system uh, and haven't for 50 years. Why would you make this change other than to give her an extra member that tips the balance to allow her to pick her judges that she wants? Okay, so let's talk about this lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the two things that you really think make this law illegal. Right. Well, the way that the bill was written and the way that the language was passed, it was in what's called the standings bill, which is an appropriations bill at the end of the year. And that bill has a whole bunch of appropriations that maybe we should have done earlier in the session. Well, they stuck a policy language into the, into the budget bill and did not put the, um, what it was about in the title. And so, essentially, the Iowa Constitution prohibits um, uh, prohibits law, what's called log rolling, which is putting more than one subject into a bill and trying to uh, pass it all together at the end of session without any public input. So what we are alleging is that this is a violation of the Iowa Constitution which prohibits multiple subjects by, from being in one bill. And there's one other thing, and you think that, that it, this infringes on the separation of powers. It is an infringement on the separation of powers because in addition to the way we pick the judges or the commission, it also um, goes after the way the Supreme Court picks their chief judge. Okay, Brian Meyer, thank you so much yep. for being here. And just, I did reach out to the governor and uh, her staff to get a response to this lawsuit and I did not hear back, but I really appreciate you being here on the show. Okay. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. It's time to get legal. In the doctor's court. Joining us, Judge <laughs> one morning and my sheets were perfect. I think you may have... The Doctor, Monday at 3 on Local 5. Hi, looking for a great deal? Yeah, we just got a cabin in the woods. Yeah. You must be pining for a RAV4. We just got a... Look, he just got a boat. Well, hitch yourself to a Tundra. Yeah, Tundra. I got a job. I got his stuff. Well, you'll look like a boss in a new Corolla hatchback. It'll fit your stuff. It'll fit it all. Release the all-new 2019 RAV4 for just $259 a month. Or get $1,250 finance cash when you buy a RAV4. To find your nearest Toyota dealer, visit buyatoyota.com. Your summer starts here. Toyota, let's go places. Do you know what awesome is? This boy. His dogs. And his mama's peace of mind. Lifeguard carpet from Shaw Floors. Designed to block spills and odors. So forget the spills and enjoy what matters. Come to Louis Floor Covering, over 50 years in business. Thank you for voting Louis number one three years in a row by Metro's Best. Financing available and free estimates. He was passionate about his barbecue sauce. People would coax and bribe, 
but even his wife didn't know what was in it. After 68 years of keeping it a secret, his final wish was to share his recipe. Now his spicy legacy will live on. Only a Dignity Memorial professional can celebrate a life like no other. Find out how at DignityIowa.com. You're watching This Week in Iowa, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Iowa. Welcome back, everyone. We are joined now by Kimberly Graham, the first Democrat announcing she is running against Senator Joni Ernst in the 2020 election. Ms. Graham, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Okay, an attorney from Des Moines, why run for U.S. Senate? Well, like a lot of people, um, in the last couple of years, I've been um, really disappointed in our representation uh, in Washington. And um, I am at a point in my life where I have the time to be able to do that. I've been a single mom, and my son is now 19 years old. And so I have the time to do it, and I really am passionate about real people and solving real problems for them and that's what I've been doing in my career for 20 years and that's what I hope to do in the United States Senate. So talk to me a little bit about your uh, your career and how you feel qualified to do something like represent the people of Iowa. Um, for the last 20 years I've been an advocate and attorney for abused and neglected children here in Iowa and for families for parents as well and in that role um, my job is to solve real problems for real people and in doing that, I have to look at all the options, I have to really listen to people, I have to really be present with people and find out what is going to make their lives better, how can I help those families move forward, and I hope to just do that on a larger scale and use those skills to represent everyday middle class and lower income Iowans in Washington. But you've never even run for office before. This is a big leap to all of a sudden run against Senator Joni Ernst. Well, I think it's just past time for us to have representatives who really are just regular working people um, who maybe aren't career politicians, you know, who haven't spent 10 or 15 years already in politics. Not that that's always bad, but um, I think there needs to be a lot more just common sense, you know, hey, this is what I've seen, experienced last year because I've, I, I was a working person and not, you know, um, in the United States Senate last year, I was actually working and um, helping people last year, and these are the problems that I see. And I think when we get when we get politicians that um, make a career out of that, we lose a lot of that common sense um, in Congress. I don't think we have enough people who are first-time candidates in Congress. What do you see is the number one issue facing Iowans right now? Well. For our rural communities, of course, the the tariffs and the trade wars are really hitting them extremely hard. Uh, and But hopefully that will get resolved. I hope that that gets resolved really soon. But the issue that will never go away is medical care, the provision of medical care um, and the cost of prescriptions. You know, I think all of us know people who cannot afford their medical insurance premiums. Um, we hear story after story of people dying because they're rationing their insulin because they cannot afford the cost of it, so they're trying to stretch it and make it go further. And that is just completely unacceptable to me. And the Republicans in Congress had two years of a clear shot where they had the House, they had the Senate, they had the White House, and they were either unable or unwilling to do anything about these really crisis level problems with medical care in this country. What makes you think that you are more suited to do that though than Senator Ernst? Uh, I, I think on a basic level it's because I really deeply want to do something about it. You have to have the will to do it and I am left to conclude since Senator Ernst voted seven times to repeal the Affordable Care Act, but I didn't see any viable plans at least coming from her office or any other Republican's office that would be a better idea than the Affordable Care Act, that they either don't want to fix it or don't, don't, don't want to or don't care about fixing it. And, you know, the big money in politics, I believe, is at the root of a lot of that. Um, it was well publicized in March that Senator Ernst had a big dollar fundraising breakfast with healthcare industry officials in Washington, Washington D.C., and I think you can't serve two masters. You, you cannot serve these high dollar donors and serve regular people, middle class people, at the same time. You've got a conflict of interest there. So I think that that's part of why this problem hasn't been solved yet. But that leads me to my next question, which is fundraising. Uh, fundraising is a 
huge thing in Senate races. You have to raise a lot of money to have a lot of TV ads airing in a lot of different markets. So if you don't have those high dollar fundraising yeah. events, then how do you plan to get into these people's homes and to get the name recognition and to really have them feel like they know you? Right. So we're not going to have high dollar and I'm, um, I can almost guarantee we're going to be out, out raised. That I, I would expect that, absolutely. And what we do is we take 20 bucks from this person and 10 bucks from this person donates and hopefully we can gather enough money together from a lot a large number of small dollar um, donations and then also we um, don't have the luxury we're not going to have luxury of a lot of TV ads so that means that I'm going to be working so hard and being in all 99 counties as many times as I possibly can at least two to three times hopefully I'm pushing for four before June of next year and I'm going to be calling every single small radio station and every single small newspaper in the state and I hope to do a media tour of all of those small radio stations and small newspapers because that's where a lot of people get their news in these small towns and then that's another way they can get to know me. I wish I could sit down and talk to all 3.1 or so million <laughs> Iowans in the next year but there's not going to be time for that so we're going to have to do it other ways. Kimberly Graham, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> thank we you so much. It. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. What makes the Gracious family of Classic Homes different from everyone else? At Gracious, we believe the home is the heart of the family. For nearly 45 years, the Gracious family has been designing and crafting the finest homes in the Des Moines metro and surrounding areas. From move-up buyers to empty nesters and everyone in between, we help families turn their dreams into reality. We offer high-quality homes at affordable prices that are as unique as your family. The Gracious family of Classic Homes, we live a dream. Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum houses one of the world's largest auto racing collections. It is also home for the coveted Borg Warner Trophy. Win the Indy 500 and you join an elite group of champions forever immortalized in silver. But look close, you will see a unique 24 karat gold portrait of the late Speedway owner, Tony Holman Jr. His likeness was added in 1987. Mitsubishi electric systems are smarter, more efficient, and designed to deliver room-by-room -room temperature control. So it's always comfortable in the living room, bedroom, the room you work out in, the room you work in, in rooms with ducts, rooms without ducts, rooms with all ducts, rooms that get kind of funky, rooms that are kind of funky, rooms for cat people, rooms for dog people, rooms without people, big rooms, monster rooms, old rooms, and smart ones. Oof, Alexa, cool as 68. Mitsubishi electric, make yourself comfortable. Time goes by so quickly, and the money you save now can help build your family's future. A College Savings Iowa account is the perfect gift for the important people in your life. May 29th is 529 Day. Celebrate all month by opening a College Savings Iowa 529 account for that special student or future student in your life. Register to win a $529 College Savings Iowa 529 account at iowa529contest.com before May 31st. We want to thank all of our guests for coming on our show today and sharing their time with us. We'll switch gears and talk about the first congressional district race next week. We hope to see you then.